Hey, what's going on YouTube? It is General Tar Heel bringing you a new video for a whole new generation of Pokemon. Now, first off, I want to apologize for not uploading since the end of the recent APA season, which was over half a year ago. Um, personally, I just felt like I had better stuff to do, um, and I felt like the break was the most opportune thing for me. Uh, near the end of Pokemon, there wasn't really that much draft league to do. I didn't want to do any more draft leagues near the end of it. And even though I did, of course, consider uploading different Pokemon content, um, I was told near the end of this generation, it's not the best for me to go ahead and start outputting because I'm not going to get the best feedback for my work. Um, it's at the start of Sword and Shield when I need to start uploading. Now, even though I did wait until now to upload and not the initial start of the release for Sword and Shield, it's because uh, I'm a senior in college and I was getting overwhelmed with work. And of course it came down to finals week, but now I'm finally on break and I want to upload this stuff for you. And I've been in a few leagues, um, actually during the finals and everything, but I've been trying to keep it up and do the correct um, amount of work and everything. So I got my battles ready, so I'm just here to record some stuff for y'all and hopefully y'all appreciate it. I'm going to go in-depth for the APA draft, of course, and then I'm going to have the battles for that every week. I'm probably going to upload my week one at the same time as this draft analysis or maybe a little bit after. And then from there on out, it should be uploading around every Saturday or something of the sort. Um, I'm also in the SDL, which I used to upload. I don't know. I don't believe I'm going to upload that one, unfortunately, um, because I don't really have the best draft, and I just don't really want to force myself to upload two leagues at a time unless I really need to. But I would like to start a draft series where I um, go over the new Pokemon in draft league format and talk about their viability, and have some replays from the leagues that I'm in if I'm allowed to use them, to where I can um, talk about how effectively they be they can be used and how um, they have been used so far in draft. Because there's a lot of new things that are so important. It's like, I, even items as well. Like, heavy duty boots is so good now. Like, there's a lot of things to go over. But, we're here for the APA Classic Season 15. Um, I, I'm really hyped for this because, well, it's my first draft when it comes down to the Generation 8. And I'm just looking forward to all the possibilities. And I was even more hyped to find out when I had first draft pick overall. Um... And yes, you can't see the entire draft on the board, but I don't care about that. This just makes it a whole lot easier for me. Um, and I hope you guys should stay here to listen to everything. So we do have 24 coaches for this season, I believe. And it was divided up into two draft pools where we had tiers that, also, that were tiers for points. Now, I don't fully agree that at the immediate start of a generation that you should do tier. I am a firm believer that you should do free draft format at the start of a generation. Don't limit the new Pokemon, see what they're capable of in one season and then move on from there. It's okay to have one floss season to where you're gonna have the best seasons after because honestly some of these weren't tiered properly but it was just the overall consensus that we were gonna do a tiered slash point value and we were just gonna go alongside with that. Some of these I feel like were tiered a little bit too high and the tiers themselves cost a lot of the points even for the amount we were given but we did pretty well, I think, overall. I mean, there's definitely areas that my team isn't the best in, which I'll cover throughout the video, but I'm very happy with this team. And when it came to my first overall pick, I was really deciding between a few things, uh, mainly Dragapult and um, Darmanitan. Galarian Darmanitan, of course, because Gorilla Tactics is crazy. Um, I even considered, like, um, Hidden Ability Cinderace or Hidden Ability um, Rillaboom, because we were allowing that in this through the um, usage of the sports showdown server but i decided to go with dragapult mainly because i got galarian darmanitan in my sdl draft so therefore i had to get dragapult in this one and sure enough i decided to go with this pokemon it is absolutely beautiful this is one of my favorite designs in the generation um probably my top five for favorite pokemon in gen 8 i have to say um yamper and phalanx tying for number one for sure but this Pokemon's just amazing. Like, its stats, first of all, we have 120 attack, 100 in special attack, which special attack isn't that great, but, like, its coverage special is so good. And, of course, just dropping a Draco with this thing, so satisfying. Um, and the 142 in speed is just out of this world. There are only two or three Pokemon, three Pokemon that can outspeed it. And then one of them is technically not released in Sorora, but we are allowing it in this um, draft. So it's Sorora, Aselgore, and... Ninjask, I believe, are the only Pokemon that outspeed it. I could be wrong, of course, because I'm normally wrong because I'm dumb. But I believe those are the only things that outspeed it. And then 88 HP and 75 in both defenses. It's not too bad. Not too bad. Um, this is especially helpful when Pursuit's gone in the game. A lot of Pokemon lost knockoff. And, like, um, yes, there's still Sucker Punch to worry about for our speed tier. But, like, this thing's just so good. And its abilities are so amazing as well. Clear body so we can avoid the like, potential Intimidate if we're trying to sweep. 
Um, sorry, infiltrator, so we can go through substitutes and like screens, which is so so good. Um, especially if we see like potential like uh, dual screens, Grim Snarl or something for a great example, or it's a substitute Pokemon trying to set up. And that's so helpful for when we have Phantom Force as a main physical attack for ghost type moves, because not only do you break through protect, but you're also able to go behind the sub if they try just to sub on your Phantom Force. We, this Pokemon is just so good. It's so helpful. And Dragon Darts even hit behind subs, so good. Curse Body, always helpful, we already know. Even though it says a 30% chance to disable a move, we already know that's like 50%. That's what we're going to aim for, you know? <laughs> So, Dragapult, absolutely amazing. Amazing. Like, this was definitely probably the best first overall pick because of just the amount of different things it can do. Um, I can see myself bringing Specs a good amount of times, I'm not going to lie. But just bringing Scarfed where nothing can absolutely outspeed us and, like, we avoid any potential sweeper and, like, say, a Shell Smash Cloister, for example, where we just want to run, like, Scarf, Thunderbolt. And if he doesn't have Ice Shard, um, even then, we're probably going to be able to EV ourselves to live Ice Shard. And we can just outright KO him, which is going to be insane. This thing's coverage is just so good. I want to be very clear right here. Dynamax is banned. Dynamax is busted, okay? That thing needs to get out of draft. That doesn't exist in draft. The one thing I do think that can exist in draft is um, a properly tiered Gigantamax tier, where it's only the Gigantamax Pokemon that you're able to draft, and everyone gets one, just like Megas, and they're tiered differently. That's the only way I feel like maxing should be allowed in draft league format. Otherwise, I think it's busted. Um, I don't even like, I don't even play ladder because I'm not that big on maxing anyways, and I'm not big on ladder in the first place. So, even without Dynamaxing, Dragapult is still amazing. I mean, like, Acrobatics, Baton Pass, even though we get U-Turn, um, it's only Dry Pass allowed because a lot of things get busted Baton Pass, like Malamar and Swoobat now, which is kind of crazy. Um, disable, sub-disable sets I have seen on Dragapult, that's something I might look into. Dragon Dance setup is so huge. Of course, we had the fire coverage and the electric coverage for like Thunderbolt and of course Stab Shadow Ball. All these things are so helpful. We can even run a dual screens Dragapult. We can run um, Psychic Fangs to get rid of those screens even with our Infiltrator so it's still doing plenty of damage while getting rid of screens. Thunder Wave, Will-O-Wisp, like this Pokemon is just meant for Draft League, meant to excel in Draft League. I'm looking forward to using it so, so much and the next two Pokemon I got to support it. One, I didn't think one of these Pokemon was going to make it back to the wheel to me. And I was beyond surprised, and I had to go for it. And two, they just go so well together. So I wanted to complete my Dragon Fairy Steel Core when it got back to me. Of course, on the wheel, I pick up two Pokemon. And I decided to go with um, Ferrothorn and Grimmsnarl. Now, there's no specific order here. Um, I did, I think, put Ferrothorn in first. So I'm just going to go over that first. Um, this Pokemon, I was most likely going to grab if it made it back, purely because it's just a great steal to support... Um, Sorry, Dragapult, even though it doesn't resist the ice, that would be a little bit more helpful. Um, just its overall bulk and amount of hazards that I can get on stuff, as well as with T-Wave and knockoff spam. Like, Ferrothorn is just so helpful for Dragonthorn. Sorry, for Dragapult. <laughs> I just mixed the two. Dragathorn sounds sick, though. Um, getting off damage and chip with spikes, knockoff, speed control with T-Wave is just so helpful for Dragapult. Especially if you get rid of that one choice mon that's there to try and revenge Dragapult. It's not going to anymore. So that's the main thing behind it. Personally, I've never been the biggest fan of Ferrothorn in previous generations because I don't like a grass type that doesn't resist ground and I don't like a steel type that doesn't resist flying or ice. I feel like that's terrible. But with the loss of hidden power in this generation, I feel like Ferrothorn can excel and like the mention, the stuff I mentioned before about its support for Dragapult, I feel like is really going to highlight with this team. So I wanted to draft it and get another chance in this generation because it's definitely looking like it's going to be pretty viable. Um, so I went over its basic coverage. We all basically know what Ferrothorn does. Um, you're going to be running Iron Barbs majority of the time for all the physical attackers. And this thing's bulk is just insane, of course. Um, with the 131 defense and 116, it's with def. 74 HP, not the greatest. That's fair, because if it had too much HP, it would be even fatter, and I don't want to imagine a world like that. So I knew as long as we get Ferrothorn and we'd support it with a nice, solid um, water type later on, we're going to be sitting pretty nice. Um, Jellicent would pair perfectly with it. Um, which I believe I've done before, and even then, it just bears well with um, Dragapult in the first place. Um, in terms of Ferrothorn's weaknesses, Dragapult does cover, even though Dragapult's not the bulkiest Pokemon. If we run like an AV set, the special attackers are mainly the ones that come after Ferrothorn. If we run like an AV set this uh, one week, then boom, we will deal with it. We come in on the fighting types, and we come in on the fire types. That easy. 
Alright, and next up was the Pokemon that I definitely did not expect to make it back to me, especially when it's the number one check to Dragapult, and that is Grimmsnarl. I was beyond ecstatic to see this thing make it back to me. Look at this disgusting Dragon Fairy Steel Core in these Pokemon. Yes, this cost me a lot of points, but yes, it was worth it. So, Grimmsnarl, I think it is a very, very cool design for this generation. Um, personally, I think Morgrim's the best out of its evolution line. Um, just because I don't like the fingers on Grimmsnarl. <laughs> if you look at a picture, you could understand why I don't like it. It's just kind of weird. But Grimmsnarl is still just a sick Pokemon. Dark Fairy is an amazing typing. This Pokemon's like offensive stats are crazy. 120 attack is a little bit lower than I expected once I initially saw this Pokemon for leaks and everything like that. Um, it's still very good attack, and I'll take it. it was like, Of course, I was expecting around 130, which is a little greedy. But honestly, if they were only going to give us 120 attack, I was hoping they'd give it a little bit more defense. It doesn't need that 95 in special attack. It should have lowered it and give it a little bit more in defense. Like, 75 in both would have been at least fine with me. And its speed, eh. Like, it definitely could have been around 75 for speed. Like, I, of course, I just want this thing to be more busted. But it's still an amazing, amazing Pokemon in general. First, its abilities are so good for draft format. And just in general. Um, Prankster, of course, allows status to have priority. Uh, doesn't work for stark type pokemon we don't care we're fairies we have fairy stab in the back we're gonna hit them with like play rough or spirit break and that's just gonna hurt them so having prankster is gonna be so good especially for um potential like support setup for my dragapult for like d dance or something like that would be huge um frisk of course allows us to see what um item they have when we switch in which is so important in draft league because pokemon could be running anything especially if they're running like a weakness parry potential choice scarf users to um try and revenge scarf the um, Dragapult, as well as we're just trying to catch like any other shenanigans off guard. Um, if there's a bulky Pokemon, I don't have hazards up. We can see if they got heavy duty boots. That's important for things that are weak. Um, for an example, like Mandibuzz. Mandibuzz loves to run heavy duty boots and just come in and defog. Because yes, it does like leftovers, but if it's able to not take that 25% from hazards, that is huge, especially when it's the main defogger for a team. And Pickpocket's not the biggest thing, but I can see me potentially bringing it one week just for some cheese. But this Pokemon's coverage is what makes it so good. Prankster Bulk Up is an amazing set because of its dra Drain Punch. If it got recovered, this thing would be insane. But Drain Punch is still just as good because of its 120 attack. Um, Fake Out is so good as well. Darkest Lariat to ignore their stat boost is insane. Fire Punch coverage is good for like opposing Ferrothorns because there is a chance I face another Ferrothorn because of the two draft pools. So keep that in mind, I could also face an opposing Dragapult, which my Grimmsnarl would be so helpful in. Um, foul plays, of course, are always good. Leech Life, so you get the all the um, punch coverage from um, Fire, Ice, and Thunder. Nasty Plot, if we do want to be special. Dual Screens with Prankster is huge. Light Clay, Grimmsnarl, you guys have definitely seen it, both VGC and Laddering Singles. Um, that thing is definitely going to be big for me. We got Prankster T-Wave for speed control, which is massive. Like, this Pokemon is just going to be so good. We got Prankster Taunt, Prankster Trick. Um, I'm just looking forward to using mainly these three Pokemon. Together, this is going to be an insane core. Um, some people really think the rest of my team kind of kills it. I beg to differ. Um, I just feel like all these Pokemon are really good. Um, especially these three, and then I just, I'm able to bring these three every week. No doubt in my mind, I'm able to bring three of these Pokemon every week. Because they are just that reliable and that good. I spent a lot of points on these Pokemon, but it was the best for me. So unfortunately, after I grabbed Ferrothorn and Grimmsnarl, um, I wanted to get my Bulky Water to pair with Ferrothorn for sure. Right after I grabbed Grimmsnarl, boom, all the Bulky Waters go. Blastoise, Jellicent, Vaporeon, I was like, oh my goodness, I can't spend the points to get my Lodic, and I want to try to get something different. So I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I just felt like, first off, I was surprised that Seismitoad made it back. But even though it doesn't give me an Ice Resist yet, I feel like Seismitoad was the best option. One, I have two amazing Stealth Rockers in Seismitoad and Ferrothorn. Like, I don't have to worry at all anymore about trying to get, like, other potential Hazard Setters. Because these Pokemon are just the best. And also, just having the amazing Resistances, or the 4 times coverage, between both of these Pokemon, Seismitoad and Ferrothorn, is huge. Um, just another Pokemon I'm trying to abuse with, um, not having hidden power anymore. Seismitoad immediately goes up in tier values compared to previous generations because Pokemon aren't just able to run hidden power grass anymore and deal with it because it's not as bulky as Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn can take hidden power fires pretty well. Seismitoad was really forced to run Rindo Berry a good amount of time and everything like that, which was really unfortunate. Now, grass coverage is still pretty 
decent among some Pokemon, but this Pokemon is still just so good. Um, its stats are so well-rounded. I love Seismitoad. 105 HP is so bulky. I love it. And then 75 in both defenses makes it to where you can make it whatever kind of bulk you want every week and EV it to your potential. You got the Chinese Seismitoads where Envy, which really highlights how well you can make this Pokemon. Um, because of its coverage in both physical and special, with decent stats, I'd say, in those terms of offense with, ni with 95 and 85, really values it. And its speed is always good to outspeed some bulk, and you're able to um, just get off a of Toxic or something with it. Now, I didn't mention this yet, but we are doing Pokemon Home valued moves um, on the sports server. So, even Pokemon that don't get Toxic anymore in this generation, they're allowed to get Toxic. So, initially, when I was doing this draft, I forgot about that. And I was just like, oh yeah, I'll have Ferrothorn and Seismitoad. I'm going to get like the best toxic Pokemon that aren't actually poison, and that's going to be huge for my team. And then it was basically after that round that I realized, oh yeah, we can have the um, moves after. So that was kind of silly on my part, but either way, this Pokemon still works well with my team. Its coverage is amazing, we all know what it does. It even gets power with this generation to deal with other bulky waters, which is huge. Um, I just love Toad. I think it's going to go very well with this team. But um, not being an Ice Resist is going to be big for me, and I'm going to have to find an answer to that later on for sure. Um, next up, I wanted to get some Hazard Control. I felt like it'd be great support for my team, and I wanted to get one of the better ones. Um, and this is the same round where I thought a lot of Pokemon didn't get Defog and everything like that, so I wanted to get a decent Spinner to go along with my Amazing Hazard Setter and Ferrothorn. So I decided to go with Hitmontop. Hitmontop is a Pokemon I am very, very comfortable with. A lot of people hate on Hitmontop, but I absolutely love it. Um, just Foresight... Um, rapid Spin is so good. You literally get no spin block and it's huge. Intimidate is an amazing ability along with Technician. You're mainly running Intimidate because this thing's better defensively bulky in my opinion. That's how you're running it majority of the time. But Offensive Technician is also slept on. Because of its coverage in Fake Out and then um, Mock Punch, things like that, it's just so helpful. Now only 50 HP is those where it lack, but it does have 95 defense and 110 speed F, which makes it very good. Um, especially with Intimidate, you're able to run at least a little bit more speed F if you want to, or a max defensive Intimidate really helps you versus those physical threats, and it really just puts itself out there. So actually getting Toxic on this Pokemon because of the Pokemon home moves is nice, because this is what Toxic's normally run as a fourth move on him on top. Also, just getting Rapid Spin as a spin boost for him on top allows it to um, pick up for its 70 base speed and actually potentially just sweep a po um, sweep a team late game. Like if I am a um, like an HP and attack invested uh, hit on top with Intimidate, if I get a Rapid Spin and then I have like close combat Earthquake coverage, something like that, I might actually still be able just to sweep a team. Um, its coverage isn't that insane. It gets um, walled by Psychics and Fairies very easily, uh, which is understandable, but I have Pokemon to capitalize on that. I have Dragapult for the Psychics and Fairies. Um, I have Ferrothorn, which sits in front of them for days. Actually, it sits in front of both of those Pokemon for days. And I was actually going to get a Pokemon soon that was going to help me out more with Fairies, which is pretty important. But yeah, uh, Hitmontop's really just here for me to have at least some sort of a fighting Pokemon, mainly Rabbit Spin and Intimidate for um, bulk support. So I got a lot of bulky Pokemon at this point, so I really want to cap capitalize on the rest of my offense. I didn't feel like I needed any more Hazards because of um, Ferrothorn and Seismitoad. So I want to go alongside the route of finding a good fire type and fairy killer, and I feel like that best option was paying the points for Salazzle. This was going to hurt me in the long run, but Salazzle is such a good Pokemon, and it did hurt itself a lot by losing Hidden Power, because Hidden Power Grass was just so good on the nasty plot set for Salazzle. And we didn't live in a generation where this move or this Pokemon didn't have Z moves, so that's something where it's also important to consider for sweeping potential with nasty plot. But Salazzo is still just so good. Corrosion is a beautiful ability. I'm literally able to Toxic Stall and get so much ship off for so many teams with this Pokemon. With Salazzo, Seismitoad, and Ferrothorn, this is huge. If they don't have a Cleric, they're literally going to um, kick themselves in the butt for this. Um, I don't want a Toxic Stall, necessarily, but it is a viable um, strategy for at least um, to get rid of like one Pokemon. I necessarily don't want to do it versus a whole team, but it's something you got to take into consideration. So Corrosion is huge just for... The ability to get off a poison versus a steel type or another poison type so so good especially if you have like an once again if i'm facing like a fat ferrothorn duraludon anything like that could be that potentially like um, threatening versus my team because steel types are kind of an issue for me um at the very bare minimum i would say so this last was really helpful but 117 speed is also great that gives me an amazing speed tier uh, beneath um dragon Ball's already amazing 142 
because as of right now, I have a big drop between, I think it's just 74 at Seismitoad all the way to 117 at Salazzle, which is pretty big, and I'm going to try to patch that. But to be completely honest, a lot of people will kind of get at you for those B tiers. But if you look into it right now, um, yeah, there's really not that many Pokemon between like 80 to 100. Like, I think there's only four Pokemon with base 100 speed, to be completely honest, which is insane. Um, and yeah, yeah, people can complain about the national decks. I love this. If you're playing national decks in a draft league right now or on the ladder, <laughs> That's just sad. Like, I understand, like, you're upset, you want every Pokemon, but, like, you gotta feel the meta. You gotta, like, get an understanding of this generation. And if it doesn't appeal to you, that's fine. I just don't understand how you at least don't try this out first and do a whole season with the normal Pokemon. Let's last one. Once again, we, knew what, we know what it does. Very straightforward. Um, fire and poison coverage. It, it gets Thunder Wave? Did it always get Thunder Wave? I actually don't recall that. So if it, if it just learned it now... That's sick. Um, but yeah, that's more speed control for me. I did not notice that, first of all. Of course, we get Taunt. Like, a sub-disable set is also so good on Salazzle. Um, just choice specs. Like, there's so many options with this Pokemon that I'm looking forward to using it once again. Like, these first six are amazing to me. A lot of people will hate on him on top, but I think these first six are so good. So this is where I'm diving into, like, the bottom of the tiers, because I spent so many points on my previous Pokemon. Um, the lowest was 40 points and the next was 60 and 80, so I wanted to get at least a decent 80 value, and I decided to go with something that actually really interested me, and would actually help me out a little bit more with my ice weakness, and that's Mr. Rhyme, or Daddy Dimes, as you see here, because this man is a dime, he's got dance moves, he looks so good, he is a complete dad thought, just look at this man. I really can't wait for them to upload sprites into Showdown, but either way, Mr. Rhyme is here, and he's ready to dance on my opponent's graves. Not the best stats. Some people argue that um, Galarian Mr. Rhyme is better, but I just had to use Mr. Rhyme because of his dancing. Like, let's be real. Um, also, I think Galarian Mr. Mime was a tier higher, so this was actually better for me anyways. 110 in Special Attack, really good, um, to be completely honest, especially when he gets Freeze Dry Spam. That's huge. Um, 100 in Spidef is actually pretty helpful because then I can earn Defensively Bulky with, like, dual screens, which is pretty nice. Um, and speaking of screens, Screen Cleaner, absolutely amazing ability. Removes screens and veil effects on switching. Huge, huge, huge. Um, of course, I believe that's only... I actually haven't tested it yet, so that I let me know in the comments. Does it actually get rid of the screens, or is it only if Mr. Rhyme is in like a neutralizing gas kind of appeal? Because um, I actually don't know, and I haven't tested it yet. Tangle Feet's never really going to come into play. Ice Body could be a potential option, and I'll get to that soon, because we have a Pokemon event. Benefits with Hail, which you see on the screen, but I'll cover it in a second. Um, this Pokemon is actually very good because uh, its coverage is insane. Um, and, and its tech is more so what I mean. It gets Trick, it gets Trick Room, it gets Thunder Wave, Taunt, Dual Screens, Rapid Spin, Nasty Plot, um, Call Mine, Baton Pass for coverage, uh, Fake Out, sorry, I meant to say for um, Setup. I Shard even per priority, even though it does prefer Special. Like, this Pokemon could be slept on, like, easily. Freeze Dry is also just so good for spam, especially with that 110 special attack. That's going to be really helpful at chipping away a lot of Pokemon, especially the bulky waters that my team could potentially struggle with. So having that is huge. I don't have to rely on, like, f um, Fair Thorn or Toadsworth um, Power Whip. Sorry, <coughs> Seismitoad, saying my nicknames. Um, relying on Power Whip because that only has, of course, 80% accuracy and could miss. So Freeze Dry um, Stab is huge. For Mr. Rhyme, it could really help out my team. Um, I just love like the potential of this Pokemon with all it can do. And putting heavy duty boots on this Pokemon so it doesn't take any damage from hazards, and then I can um, run Rapid Spin, it's just so good. Um, where is it? Yeah, Rapid Spin right here. So I can definitely see myself, uh, and I'm going to say I've already uh, brought the set, you'll see a week one. Um, bring Rapid Spin with heavy duty boots and just three attacks. Because I literally might just be able to. Rapid Spin, get the speed boost, and do so much damage versus a team, because they might not be able to revenge me with a plus one speed. Um, only 70 base speed does allow for a lot of Pokemon to still outspeed, like Dragapult, for example. Um, but there's not that many Pokemon all the way up there, you know? So at least I'm forcing like another Scarfer to come in to where I can see their Scarfer. Or if they bring in one of their fat Pokemon that I might not necessarily kill, it might help me to get a lot of chip off for like Dragapult or Grimmsnarl or Salazzle in the end, to where I can get a sweep with them, or just break through the rest of their walls. So I feel like Mr. Rhyme has a lot of potential. 
and it was definitely going to be useful. I just wanted to try out a few more new Pokemon, especially since I already got um, Grim and Dragapult. I wanted to get as many new posts as I can. So after that, I'm happy with three new Pokemon, and I can try to focus on the rest of my um, supportive team. I wanted to get the best Pokemon possible when it came down to this last bottom tier, which was a little bit difficult. To be completely honest, there wasn't that much appealing things down there. The most appealing to me was Duosion. It is a double up typing on um, Mr. Ryan, but I really don't care about that. Especially um, for like Dark and Ghost, I literally have Grimmsnarl in the back, which is an amazing check, um, once again. So having Duosion, I feel like is great, because once again, it gets stored power this generation. So it's just, uh, stored power is all at the bottom. But you basically just do Acid Armor, Call Mine, Recover, Stored Power, Run Eviolites so you're bulkier than Reuniclus and you win. And Magic Guard, of course. Like, this is basically what you're going to see if I bring Duosion. I could bring a Trick Room Offensive set that does have potential, but um, just the thought of this is huge, especially if they don't have a good Dark type, or I'm able to capitalize on their Dark type with either my Grim Snarl or my Hitmontop. That'd be very nice for me. Uh, Duosion, I think, was just one of the best in the bottom tier, so I definitely had to grab it for 40 points. Uh, and even though I do also have Reuniclus and SDL, it's just that they're, these Pokemon are so reliable at potentially sweeping that I had to grab it. I really did. So, nothing more to say about Reuniclus. We already know what, or sorry, Duosion, because we know what Reuniclus does. It's just the same thing. It's just that you're basically forced to always run Aviole. I could run a Choice Pack set one week. It's just my bulk is not that great. So, I really want to capitalize on with Aviole. Next up, I decided to pick Bear Tick. I felt like this is going to be a good potential wall breaker for me. Um, that I don't really have on the physical side for the rest of my team uh, because Dragapult Just about always wants to run special. I don't really want to say that because that's more so ladder um, Biased So like basically if you just look at Dragapult and Grimmsnarl, that's just about it for my like strong physical wall breakers um, Both at 120 base attack. So I wanted to at least grab another one. Bear Tick having the best attack in the base I feel like is good. Um, once again, I'm double up on the ice topping, but I really don't care um, and this also just gives me a potential sweeper because I can easily run like Sushrust or Swift Swim. Like I can have a dual Swift Swim set one week with um, Seismitoad and my um, Bear Tick. It's where I'm able. Was I saying Pangoro or Bear Tick? Either way. Uh, Bear Tick's going to be doing great. Uh, th yes, its speed is where it lacks and it doesn't have the best bulk. It's pretty decent bulk. Like it's definitely taking a hit. But like the speed is where it lacks. Um, quite a few things can still outspeed it even after the plus two speed in the weather. Um, so I have to be aware of that, but like, I wish it had slightly better coverage, not gonna lie, but it's still pretty good and I can see myself using a bear tick pretty well one week. Uh, what you got for a well-played bear tick? Um, gives me more priority in Aqua Jet, which is pretty helpful. Uh, bulk up set, Encore is even amazing tech on it. Like, I feel like it's gonna do its job for a low tier and just be effective for like, maybe like two or three games throughout the season and that's basically it to be completely honest, but... Um, when I do use it, I hope to capitalize on its um, potential possibilities. Lastly, um, I just wanted to get Electrotite and help me out with Waters. Give me more of a pivot as well, because that's one thing my team does lack in, is um, pivots to get like Dragapult in as much as possible. That's one thing I wish I could have capitalized on more to um, get um, Dragapult in, especially if I have all that Hazard support and Ferrothorn and Seismitoad. I feel like that could have been huge. So, um... When it came down to me, I was like, okay, if a um, certain amount of people like this comment, I am going to get uh, Yamper. And people, I said if it gets a certain amount of hearts and everyone just did different color hearts. They tried to force me getting Yamper, but I wanted Pikachu. And then immediately after the draft, the person that drafted Manetric dropped Manetric. Manetric was probably one of the other top ones for 40 points. So I immediately picked up Manetric and it was effective week one. So I said, yep, this is on my team. 105 speed is actually perfect for me. It's just above the base 100 and it does... Um, course fit properly right beneath the lazzle i still have that massive um difference between base 74 speed to 105 but it's really hard to patch especially when there's not that many pokemon and the amount of self i limited myself sorry uh that was very poorly said the way i limited myself the points in the draft really hurt me because there wasn't really things around the 80 speed and lower tiers that's more so higher up so i don't really know if i'm going to be able to make that effective um free agent to a, um, break apart that difference down there, but it's okay. So Manetric is still better. I think Manetric might be better than Jolteon right now, in my opinion. Um, Jolteon, of course, lost Hidden Power Ice, as if as did every Electric, but also lost Signal Beam. 
but I wasn't including Pokemon Home, which this league does allow. Um, so, but my Netric's still good because it gets the fire coverage for the grass types at least. It's not really doing too much to um, ground types. It does get Ice Fangs, but you're running special, of course, so it doesn't really matter. Switcheroo could be great for a Choice Specs or Choice Scarf set, getting that on a fat Pokemon, which is huge. So I feel like my Netric's just going to help out the team as a potential Volt Switch Pokemon to get in some work. Um... Also gets Lightning Rod, which is pretty helpful, just another electric community. Uh, I already have one, so it, I don't really feel like I need another one, but it's still helpful. Uh, static could come in clutch, especially if we want to run like a cheesy, um, bulky set, just try to get a paralysis on a um, strong physical attacker, for example. So, yeah, you can definitely see it. Um, I don't really see this Pokemon doing too much otherwise than being just a strong pivot. Probably could be just like... Um, uh, like a Magnet set, maybe Life Orb or Specs with like Switcheroo. Um, that's just about it, honestly. But it supports the team pretty well, and I've, overall, I like my team a lot. So, the one thing that I really noticed at the end is that I don't have a ground resist or an immunity. Which is pretty big, to be completely honest. But not many Pokemon in this generation spam Earthquake, so I feel like it's not as bad for me. But if I face like an Exadrill, it's really going to hurt me and I need to be really offensive in that matchup because I'm not going to have the defensive switches. The only thing I could potentially see me like dropping on this team and switching out would be something like Mr. Rhyme, but I really want to try and use him effectively first before I make a switch like that. There's absolutely nothing like the bottom tier where I could substitute out like Bear Tick for something helpful. So you might see me switch out Mr. Rhyme at one point. I really hope not to. I really want to just try and use this team the best I can because I don't care about the glaring like ground weakness. I'm still kind of weak to ice as well because like Salazzle's not that bulky and my two other resists are ice types which don't do that much back to other ice types. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit annoying, but I feel like my team is still like going to do very well because I'm comfortable with like the thought of using these three every week. And I've used some of these Pokemon before to where I'm confident in my ability to use these Pokemon effectively. So please let me know down in the comment section what you think of this team. Whether you think I drafted it that well. Give me a rating out of 10 if you really want to. Or tell me some of the Pokemon that you're looking forward to most in using Draft League. That's what I want to know. Because there is so much potential in this new generation. And I love all the possibilities. So let me know. I'm looking forward to all these weeks to come for APA Classic leading up to APA Main, which will be happening next year. I'm not going to tell you all when yet, but uh, either way, I am so hyped. I'm going to try to pump out videos for you guys over break and get um, into the rhythm for the coming semester, which will be my last semester, which I'm really looking forward to. I'm looking forward to everything, basically, is what I'm getting at. But I hope you guys can stick with the positivity that I got going on and looking forward to the next week's coming up for me in the APA Classic. So that'll be it for me today, y'all. Sub, like, share, deuces.